All right. So today we're going to look at some harder acid-base calculations, and um, in, more specifically, we're going to look at the kind of ratio questions where um, you kind of have to work out the ratio between two different um, compounds. So um, these are definitely some harder ones. So uh, do you kind of stop the video, or whatever, if you're struggling, and have a look back over. Um, it's important you really know these equations. I'll give them to you in the exam. So please do learn the equations for like buffers, weak acids, strong acids. Oh. So um, for ratios, what we really want to find out is how many moles of acid we've got for how many every mole of propionic acid or lactic acid. So if they're in the same volume, which in the exam they will be, they'll be kind of like in a pot together. That's going to be the same as the concentration of acid with regards to the concentration of the propionic acid. Uh, of your base. So in this reaction, um, we've got propionic acid and aluminium propanoate. We're given their concentration, so you've got one mole per dm cubed of the acid and half a mole per dm cubed of aluminium propanoate. You'll tell the initial pH of this and the final pH. Hopefully, you'll be able to see which kind of uh, equation we'll be using. Propionic acid is clearly a weak acid. However, um, aluminium propanoate, this propanoate on here, it's the, it's the base pair, uh, the conjugate base pair of the propanoic acid. So hopefully you can see that this is a buffer system. So um, going back to the ratios, what we really want to find is the concentration of acid over the concentration of our propanoate on. The reason this is, is because say we have a ratio of 10 to 1. That means we've got 10 moles of acid for each mole of propanoate. That means that there's going to be a ratio, there's 10 of these for each one of these. So this will come out as 10. So you can kind of work out the ratios just from knowing you know, what one divided by the other is. So that's what we're really kind of aiming for in this situation. So how are we going to find this? Well, it's a buffer system. So we want to obviously use the buffer equation. So let's write out the buffer equation. You know, the concentration of H plus is equal to the Ka times by the concentration of the acid over the concentration of our conjugate base pair, which in this case is the propanoate ion. So it should look something like this. So what do we know? We want to find, basically, that bit of that. So the things we don't know are the concentration of H plus and the Ka. This is the final bit. So the concentration of H plus is going to be the concentration at the end. Okay. So how can we find that out? Well, we're given the pH of the final um, kind of system. So we can find it out from there. Hopefully you all know that the concentration of H plus is equal to 10 to the minus pH. So in the final bit of the system, the concentration of H plus is going to be equal to 10 to the minus 4.17. Be careful. Lots of people do it the wrong way around and put in the initial pH. This is wrong. We're looking at the end of the reaction. So we just basically want the initial, uh, the final pH rather than the initial. So chuck it in your calculator. So 10 to the minus 4.17 should come out as 6.76 times 10 to the minus 5. So we know that now. But we don't know the Ka. So we still can't work it out. So we've got to find out what the Ka is. We're told that there's an initial buffer system as well with this ratio. So let's write out a buffer equation. Now, we've got to rearrange it to find the Ka. So you can either write out this again and rearrange it, or you can just write out your normal Ka expression for the dissociation of propionic acid. So both work. They both get you the same thing. So the Ka is going to be the concentration of your H plus, the concentration of your propanoate ion, 
all over the concentration of your acid, like so. So, here we've got the concentration of the H plus, the concentration of the propanoate, and the concentration of the acid. Let's start with the concentration of the H plus. We don't know it, but we're given the initial pH. So we can work it out, because we're looking at the initial system here, rather than the final system, and that's very important. So let's work out the uh, pH again, using the same equation as last time. We know that the concentration of H plus is going to be 10 to the minus 5.47, and again, just work it in your calculator. 10 to the minus 5.47 comes out. 3.388 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay? So that's what we've got there. But we still don't know the concentration of the propanoate or the concentration of the acid. Or do we? Well, the concentration of the acid is given. It's here. That's the concentration of the acid. So we actually know that. We, we've got that. We've got that. So the only thing left is the propanoate. The propanoic acid is very weak, all carboxylic acids are, you would be expected to know that. But that means that very little will dissociate in water, so most of it will be in the form of propanoic acid. It won't really dissociate to form propanoate ions and H plus ions. So let's kind of ignore that. But we can work out the concentration of the propanoate, because we've got the aluminium propanoate. This salt will just completely dissociate in water, so you will get aluminium ions and your propanoate ions. But aluminium is a true plus metal. So there's going to be three propanoates for every aluminium. Let's have a look at it. If we've got a ion, that's got a three plus charge. And each carboxylic acid will only lose one hydrogen. So that's only going to give you a one minus charge. So to balance the charges, you're going to need three propanoates every aluminium. So this will be your kind of, I don't know, it's not proper, but this is what it should look like. When it goes into water and uh, kind of like separates, you're going to get your aluminium ion. But you've got to keep the same number of propanoates. You can't just like magic them out of nowhere, or, and they can't just run away. They're still there. They can't escape. They're trapped. So we're going to get three of these propanoates as well. So for each mole of aluminium propanoate, you'll get three moles of your propanoate ion. And because they're still in the same volume, for each kind of like concentration of aluminium propanoate, you'll get three concentrations, three times the concentration of the propanoate ion. So we've been told there's 0.5 moles per dm cube of the aluminium propanoate. Mm -hmm. That means the concentration of the propanoate will be three times the concentration of the aluminium. So it's going to be 3 times 0 0.5, which gives 1.5. If it was 1 plus, it's going to be 1, there's going to be 1 to 1 ratio, so it's just going to be the same. If it was 2 plus, there's going to be 2 propanoates for each um, salt, so it's going to be 2 times 0 0.5. In this case, it's 3, so it's 3 times 0 0.5, which is 1.5. All right. Now we know what the concentration of the propanoate is. So we can work out the Ka. So we'll go back, let's work out the Ka. The Ka is going to be the concentration of H+, which is the initial concentration, remember? So it's here, we've got that. So let's try that in, 3.388 times 10 to the minus 5. We've got the, con the concentration of the propanoate here, just worked it out. So that's times by 1.5, and it's all over the concentration of the acid, which we've been told is 1. So, chuck it in your calculator again. You get the Ka to be 5.08 times, uh, oh, that's to the minus 6, isn't it? Sorry, times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, so that's going to be your Ka. So, going back to here, do we know the H plus concentration? Yes. Do we know the Ka? Yes. 
and we want to find what the acid over propanoate is. So now we can do that. Let's first of all rearrange it, because at the moment it's not very nice. So what we get is the concentration of acid over the concentration of propanoate is going to be equal to the concentration of H plus over the Ka. Now you can see this, if you just divide both sides by Ka, that's how it comes out. Okay. So we know the concentration of H plus. Remember this time it's final, it's the final conditions. So here we've got this value instead of the previous one. So 6.76 times 10 to the minus 5. That's going to be over our Ka. Just work that out. So that's 5.8 times 10 to the minus 6. Again, chuck it in your calculator. Remember, it is important that you know how to use your calculators um, because things like logs and things do come up quite a lot. So you need to be able to do that. This then comes out as 13.3, which means that there's 13.3 acids for each propanoate. Notice this time we didn't times the propanoate by 3. This is because we want a concentration of propanoate, not of aluminium propanoate. If it was aluminium propanoate, we times it by 3, because there's 3 lots of... Uh, there's, because of the ratio, basically. They will never ask you to find the concentration of aluminium propanoate because it doesn't really exist. It's in water. So just be expected to find the concentration of propanoate. So here, the concentration of acid to propanoate is going to be 13.3 to 1 because there's 13.3 acids for each propanoate ion because 13.3 over 1 is 13.3. So this here is actually the answer. It's not a particularly nice answer, but it's the answer. So you basically just got to work backwards through the steps to find the equations, then go through again with numbers the correct way through and find out what your answer is. Um, this is what you're really looking for though, the ratios. So do be careful, and especially be careful of the final initial conditions. Back that out.